This week, Gina and I are kicking off the holiday season at a truly one-of-a-kind German market as we take the kids out for some cultural holiday shopping fun at the Chris Kendall Market. Then the AYL crew is going back to the Red Rock as we visit a one-of-a-kind state park that you'll want to be sure to add to your bucket list as it packs an extra sweet surprise in the springtime. Finally, we're headed down to the Logandale Trail System in Southern Nevada as we visit one of the best full-size Jeep events hosted by the Vegas Valley Four-Wheelers. It's all headed your way now at your leisure is next. Martinson. Now I'm Kevin Mortensen and we're here with a couple of our nieces and our daughters at the Chris Kendall Market at This is the place Heritage Park in Salt Lake City, Utah. This is the eighth year they've been putting this on. And I heard it started with only 30 booths and right now we have over a hundred booths to go check out so today. We've got a lot of stuff to go do today. We're gonna send you guys over to talk to Allison. She started this from scratch kind of on an idea. Well, she lived in Germany for a while and loved the Christmas markets there and wanted to bring it here when she came back to America. She wants to put the kind in Christmas, thus yes. Chris Kindle Market. Let's go talk to her now. There's amazing food. There's amazing performances. We have a live nativity the first night of the market, and then we have daily parades. As I walk around and see people, I think it's just a wonderful gathering place where people can come and have this magical experience and get in this season. And there's also amazing shopping, I should also say. A lot of vendors that have um, hand make their own wares that they're selling. So there's just such a variety of wonderful things that bring people here. Every year we try to get as many vendors that represent um, Chris Kindlemarks in, in Germany and um, we I think do a wonderful job uh, at this. And I think this is a great place to get presents and gifts and German and other things that you love about Christmas. I grew up with Chris Kindlemarks and Weihnachtsmärkte as they're also called every year of my life. We would go to the markets and we will eat the wonderful uh, foods and buy the wonderful presents and little things for Christmas and for friends. So when I first moved here in 2008 and found that they had a uh, Christkindermarkt here, I thought we've got to go and I took my eight-year-old son then and we went to the lantern parade because that's another tradition that we loved in Germany and we just fell in love with it right away. Chris Kindle Market is this service that we have and it's based on a German legend of a man named St. Martin and St. Martin was riding through the countryside and came across a beggar and the beggar said, you know, I'm cold, do you have money? And he said, I don't have money but he took off his cloak, cut it in half, and gave it to the beggar and rode on. And that legend is huge in, in Germany, and they have a big parade celebrating that. And so we have that same, that's just foundational for this market, um, is that we require our performing groups to do some type of service prior to coming here. Um, and our, our logo is putting the kind in Chris Kindle Market and it's based on the St. Martin story of doing kind and doing good deeds. So I think that even expands the uh, focus and the purpose of our market. So eight years ago I said, you know what, I'm going to try it, I'm going to start. And um, I think the Utah crowd has really responded. I think people love cultural experiences here. They love doing things that they can't do year round. So it's just been a huge success. Well, Allison has done an amazing job. It's amazing what it takes to put something like this together. We've been going up and down this little street that has little vendors in every little booth, and it's amazing. I've run into some really great people that have amazing products that they're passionate about. They handpick these vendors. It's, you're not gonna come up here and find anything that doesn't have something to do with a German market. You really literally think you're back in Europe. I've never been, but this is a cheaper way of seeing Germany. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go off and check out this week's wear, too. You don't want to miss it.
Ask anyone from the West and they can tell you there is something special about the desert. The climate can be harsh and unforgiving, but it also introduces a sense of awe and wonder that few other places can manage. To quote English film director and screenwriter Sir David Lean, when you're in the desert, you look into infinity, and it makes you feel terribly small and also in a strange way, quite big. Located in the revered Red Rocks, just 15 miles northwest of St. George, lies Gunlock Reservoir, a place steeped in history and filled with beauty. Gunlock Reservoir was named after William Hayes Hamblin, or Gunlock Will, as his friends like to call him, a Mormon pioneer who settled the area in 1857. The country road to the park is the old Spanish trail that was used by horsemen and raiders from Santa Fe to Los Angeles into the 1820s until the gold rush took travelers a different route. But today, Gunlock State Park has everything you need for a perfect day with the family. The picnic pavilions provide a great base camp for meals. The water is perfect for boating and water sports. The quality fishing reels in anglers from all over the state. And there's no shortage of adventure to be found here. If Gunlock State Park didn't already seem picture perfect, this reservoir keeps some tricks up her sleeve to keep her visitors on their toes. When the perfect conditions align, the dam overflows and creates a stunning show for guests. These falls indeed are a breathtaking sight, a place where Mother Nature shows herself off to those who are lucky enough to witness it. With the fun-filled activities, the dazzling scenery, and these stunning falls, this area is indeed the perfect place for adventure. So the next time that you're ready for an adventure, keep this state park in mind. When you're itching to head into the desert, embrace the true beauty of the West, and soak up some sun, take your family to Gunlock State Park. For At Your Leisure, I'm Jim Kelly. That ski -Doo feeling presents the ultimate freedom.
Introducing the 2020 ski Deep Snow Sleds. The ski sales event is on now. Visit your local dealer for details. Hey, you don't have to miss one second of adventure. Follow at your leisure on YouTube to watch full episodes or your favorite stories from the show. And don't forget to like us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date on all of At Your Leisure's adventures. This What's New segment is brought to you by Tunex. Hunt season's here. Is your rig ready? Come and see us. Hi, I'm Brian with Tread Lightly. And I'm here at TVS Pro to talk to you about flying your drone responsibly on America's public lands. So I'm here with James, who's gonna tell us about the importance of flying responsibly. You know, if we are all being courteous, if we're all being uh, aware of ourselves and aware of where we are at, what we are doing, and being present in that moment, then we're not gonna be disturbing anybody else. So at TV Specialists, people can buy many different types of drones here? Yeah, all levels. We sell to the basic consumer. Uh, we're also on state contracts, so full end of the other spectrum, professional drones with thermal imaging and whatever else. Everybody wants to get that bird's eye view, but yeah, you do need to be aware of where you're at and what you're doing. So remember, when you're out recreating, make sure to do it responsibly and follow the tread principles. Travel responsibly, respect the rights of others, educate yourself, avoid sensitive areas, and do your part. When it comes to flying drones, here are some ways you can educate yourself. Make sure you are flying in areas where you are allowed to and where you won't interfere with anyone else or put anyone in danger. Keep your drone inside at all times. Check your drone before each flight. Plan where you'll fly. Always be aware of your surroundings and stay away from airports and helipads. If you're going to fly for commercial use, you need the appropriate license. Don't fly near wildlife. Drones can scare them and put them or others in danger. Don't fly dangerously. Always keep safety in mind. Never fly higher than 400 feet above the ground. Never fly near other aircraft. And if you are, always give way. And never fly over wildfires. That stops the firefighters from doing their job. Firefighting aircraft must be grounded when drones are present. When it comes to other forms of outdoor recreation, you can educate yourself by obtaining a map of your destination and determine which areas are open for your form of recreation. If using a vehicle, make sure it's mechanically up to the task. Be prepared with tools, supplies, spares, and a spill kit for trailside repairs. Wear a helmet, eye protection, and other safety gear. And buckle up when that's an option. Know your limitations. Watch your time, your fuel, and your energy. Know your state's laws with regards to age restrictions, sound levels, and vehicle registration. If you're hunting, know the season dates and regulations. Obtain necessary permits, hunter education requirements, and it's a good idea to take a hunter education course. Make a travel plan beforehand and let others know. Wear appropriate safety gear, hearing protection, eye protection, and orange hunting vest for yours and others' safety. Dress in layers. No matter what form of outdoor recreation you're doing, check the weather forecast and be prepared for the unexpected with emergency items. Always remember to educate yourself and be sure to follow the other tread principles when you're out enjoying nature. It's important to enjoy yourself and have a good time, but always to ensure you keep these opportunities available for future generations to come. And you can always find out more at treadlightly.org. I'm James with TVS Pro. I fly, I fish, I camp, and I tread lightly. Fly higher, go further, do more. 
Pursue your passion with Polaris, the world leader in off-road. Live wide open in a high-performance Razor. Chase adventure on a legendary sportsman. Or get more done with a hard-working Ranger. Enjoy savings up to $3,500 during the Polaris factory authorized clearance. Hi, my name is Spencer Cox. I'm the Lieutenant Governor of the State of Utah, and I'm the new spokesperson for Ride On. Ride On is a unique partnership between all the land managing agencies in the state of Utah to maintain trails, to advocate safety, to advocate wise stewardship amongst all of us who use these trails. And I'm doing it because trails matter to me. This is important for my children. I want them to be safe and I want them to be stewards of the trail. If you would like more information, go to ohv.utah.gov. For as long as I can remember, this is what we do. Rising early to take on the desert. Every weekend, every month, every year, we ride Can-Am. She usually sits out a bike trip, but for some quirky reason, she decided to come along this time. It must have been that perfect fall weather. When we first started up the canyon, Ida spent time looking at the rugged peaks. Then, as we started through the curves, the rhythm of the bike was like the two of us doing the samba. When we got to the summit and looked at the world below us, she let out a little gasp and whispered, beautiful. Then she gave me that look, that one that reminds you how close we really are. This was turning into that trip of a lifetime. Well, welcome back to At Your Leisure. We're in front of the little church here. They're having the Silent Night experience. They added that last year on the 200th anniversary of the song Silent Night. Yes. They're doing some presentations. Really great music coming from out of there. We're having a good time. We've caught up with some family. You guys having fun? Yeah. It's a good time. This is a great place to bring people and just kind of mingle around and get some good food. If you could smell what we smell, you'd come on up here. I'm excited to go try the donuts. I, so the donut shop, that's next on our list. I hope right so. now, they're gonna, we're going to go talk to Ellis Ivory of Ivory Homes. Oh. He was telling us that about 13 years ago, President Ballard from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who owns this park, and the governor of Utah called him and asked him to save it. And he's really done some good work. This is, done, they've done a great job. Yes, I talked to him about what he's done here, and it takes a lot of work to put this thing back together and build it up the way they have. You'll find out in a second how cool of a guy he really is. First year we had 30 booths. This year we have 100. And it's been, I think it's the, the best Christmas event maybe in the whole country. I think part of it is that just the whole spirit of the, of the park as well, because people love to come and see what happened at the very beginnings of what has become the greatest state in the country. And uh, they feel that as well as all the inner inter work they do with the gifts that people make. They, so many good things to buy, great food. So it's becoming more popular. We have 80,000 people now that will come in four days. Uh, frankly, it isn't a big economic thing because of course it's free. And then the uh, we have a, the the events and the all the food and everything, there's probably about as much cost to the thing as there is revenue. But it is really, really good for the community. And then more people discover the park because our attendance has been growing every year. And that's good, that's what we wanna do. We wanna have more people come and see the park and then feel what it really means. The, the whole thing of the park is families. You know, family come up, grandparents bring their grandkids, the parents bring their children. And I think this whole thing is that the family, it's a great thing for the Christmas, for all the family to come. Over here too, it's another favorite. This year for the first time, we have, I'm calling it the food court because the, over here in the pavilion, there's seven vendors that all with delicious, great food. There's so many neat things for people to see. We're just delighted to have people come and enjoy, especially on this kind of a glorious day. See, I told you Ellis was cool. Look, we've made our way up the top of Main Street and we found a massive Christmas tree. Yes. 
cute, one I would not want to decorate. It's about the size of the one you got in our living room, I'm though. Afraid of heights. <laughs> and then we just went over and we had lunch at the Huntsman Grill. Good food in there. I had the best worst. Stop saying lame jokes. <laughs> Terrible dad jokes. <laughs> Bad dad jokes. Yes, and I'm still waiting for my donut, so we have a lot more to do. Well, I can smell them. They're around here somewhere, so we still got to go out and we got to find those donuts, and we got a couple other things I want to go see. Okay. I want to try some of this food, and I've heard the hot chocolate is amazing. Hot chocolate, crepes, German chocolate. All Come kinds on. of good stuff. <laughs> you guys go check out this week's along the way, and we're going to go find donuts. Donutville. Hump and Bump in Logandale, Nevada. Um, Hump and Bump is a rock crawling uh, event that is staged in Logandale Trails about two miles away from here. They stage in the fairgrounds, the Clark County Fairgrounds, and then travel over to the trails and have a good time, come back here and regroup and have fun. And we are Partners in Conservation. We're a local nonprofit that works on public lands issues and we work with user groups, uh, anybody responsible recreation, uh, motorized or non-motorized, but uh, we, we really are fond of the motorized world because it just lets you get out there and enjoy so many activities and do so many fun things and you can do it all responsibly and not impact the desert, the mountains or the forest. It brings new people to an area that they haven't seen. Uh, they get to experience Logandale Trails. Perhaps they only go up into uh, Utah to Sand Hollow or something. So it exposes people to more public land. Uh, it gives us a chance to talk to them about desert issues. We all have to be smart and be responsible. It's the only way to keep our lands um, open and uh, usable. And so this gives us a chance to spread the word. We're kind of lucky that way where we have a lot of different um, terrain, obstacles, geology. I was just on a ride yesterday uh, where they did some crazy obstacles that I had never done before. It was so much fun. It's not just individuals uh, going on a ride and going back to their uh, trailer or their tent. It's uh, they go to, on their ride and they come back and there's a big family sit around, visit, talk back and forth. It's just wonderful. As far as we can tell from past history, Hump and Bump started in 1992 or 1993 up here in the Logandale Trail System. Um, and being, it started out as a real small group, six, eight guys huddled around, just come up for the day to go wheel and go on. Today it is, for this year as an example, we've got 225 registered rigs and just over 350 people coming for dinner tonight. It's all about the camaraderie of the event. It's about giving back to the community. It's our, our belief in treading lightly and having a good time and being good stewards of the land. The event is more than just coming up and wheeling. It's good times. Hump and Bump 2020 is gonna be in October. We're already working on that. Even though we're not even closed here, we're talking next year what to do different and how to make it even bigger and better. It is on humpandbump.com is our website for the event. We have vv4w.org. So there's lots of different ways to get to us. I never ask, are we there yet? Because my daddy makes sure each stop we make is at Eagle's Landing. They have such cool things for kids, like a petting zoo. They have the cleanest bathrooms on earth. And daddy doesn't freak out pulling up to the pumps because they're really big and he says it's the best gas in the world. And you can get your tire fixed like we had to. Oh, and their food is so yummy. Eagle's Landing is so much fun, I don't care if we ever get there.
Hi, I'm Nolan Stedman. And I'm Bruce Stedman. We have been selling motorcycles like this since 1960. Motorcycles have been part of our family forever. We love riding and enjoying the outdoors, everything that Utah has to offer. Riding motorcycles, snowmobiles, ATVs, and now side-by-sides. That's what we do, it's who we are. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. We've been proudly serving Utah's families for over 50 years. Stedman's Recreation in Tooele. You may think it's 300 miles out there, but remember, it's only 30 back. Welcome back to At Your Leisure. As you can tell, we finally found my donut shop that I've been looking for. Look, we got them. We just followed the smell. <laughs> and while we go inside and enjoy these donuts, we're going to find out who this week's sticker winner is. This week's contest winner was submitted to us on Facebook by Greg Martinez. Congratulations, Greg. It looks like you're going to win a $400 gift certificate to RyFab. RyFab offers the best custom metal fabrication for your rig. Visit RyFab.com for more details. Be sure to call us on Monday at 801-947-8888 to claim your prize. And remember, if you get caught with a special edition Eagles Landing sticker, you can win a bonus $100 gas and gift card from our friends at Eagles Landing. Now, let's take a look at our calendar of events. First off, if you're looking for some Christmas activities for the family, be sure to check out light events going on now at Willard Bay, Jordanelle, and Utah Lake State Parks. Then, coming up January 16th through the 18th is the Winter 4x4 Jamboree in Hurricane, Utah. Registration is open now, so head over to winter4x4jamboree.com and get signed up. Now let's take a look at next week's show. Next week, the AYL crew is celebrating a good old-fashioned family Christmas as we head down to the Young Living Lavender Farms for their holiday celebrations. Then we're getting out of the cold and heading south, where the red rocks and sand meet the beautiful warm blue lake at Sand Hollow State Park. Finally, Reese Stein takes us out for a holiday adventure of his own as he takes us to the Holiday Night Light Festival at the Jordanelle State Park. Okay, I told you you don't want to miss next week's show. It looks fantastic. And we've found the donuts. And they're great, just like next week's show. You know, I can't wait to dig into them. We're not done at the market yet. You see, we brought cousins, we've got aunts and uncles. We're having a good time. This is a great place to bring the family for the day. So hey, while soon. we enjoy this and enjoy a little bit more of the Chris Kindle market. I think we need to go down and get some hot chocolate. Yes, and I hear there's crates, the so crates I'm definitely going to have those. We've got a whole bunch of cousins with us. We're going to go have some fun. This is a, something you need, definitely need to put on your calendar. If you haven't done it, make sure you come next year. Should we get out of here and go see, see what's left? Mm -hmm. Remember, there's adventure around every bend. You just have to get out there and make it yourself. At your leisure.